All right, let's get going. Cool. Welcome to uh, to next episode of Arcafe. We have Ilya Kuvashnyov. Am I saying this correctly, <laughs> dude? <laughs> uh, it, it's more like Ilya Kuvshinov. Kuvshin- but okay. Okay. Yeah, j- just Ilya is okay, but uh, Perfect. <laughs> I get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something funny. Uh, whenever I go to you know stores, I get a phone call, or it's like an insurance company, or you know whatever that would be. It's just like it, it, they always butcher my name. Like th- I don't think I had <laughs> any call where where someone would surprise me and say that name correctly. Actually, I'll, I take it back. I had one call. I think for was from uh from insurance company uh where they said my name correctly and uh and the guy said yeah my girlfriend is from poland so ah uh, yeah that's <laughs> so they, why yeah so <laughs> he knew he knew some polish names so well that's uh it's really an honor to have you on the on the podcast and we're kind of doing it a little differently this time around um and hopefully in on the next one if we decide to do one more We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it the the the, the normal art cafe way, live with the audience. But that's that's cool. Uh, we decided to do it this way because it's gonna be just a little bit easier to make the conversation going. And um, and I believe that this is your first podcast, right? Yes, ever. So <laughs> this is the first time uh, you can hear my like english speaking voice on the internet ever so it's like kind of <laughs> kind of unique event for me so i'm i'm kind of like really really worried about i can say something wrong and stuff so yeah thank you for letting me have good. this like <laughs> Don't worry. we'll cut everything we need to cut <laughs> hey yeah. um do you speak japanese at all you, you yeah you must speak japanese uh, at this point right like you're, yeah you're, yeah I would. I was. I was always curious, you know. And I'll tell you something. Something uh, funny too okay. is for longest time I thought you were a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's um. Yeah. Okay too. <laughs> <laughs> you get that often, like you get uh messages from 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 people like oh like or or even just like the reading comments where people refer to you as a girl. Yeah. So the name like Ilya is like really sounds like it just girl's name. Right. And like the Russian surnames, like if you know Russian, if you're Russian yourself, you can uh, like uh, you can read the surname and understand like what's the sex of the person you read the name because it's like it have these endings on the surname. So I was like, if I was a girl, my surname would sound like Kuvshinova, but uh, I'm, I'm a guy sense. and then yeah and it's good enough so but yeah it's not uh really so you know nobody knows that so everybody's thinking i'm girl so yeah, it's very you know what it's very similar in polish in some names not all of the names but some names do end with yeah. a like it's it's exactly same i mean it's you know poland and and and, and russia are neighbors yeah you know? <laughs> there's a lot of similarities to the language i think some of the words are pretty much the same it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I never thought about that. But then uh, I, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking like, hmm, is it a dude or a girl? You know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but I, I find it really funny, mostly because like I did get um, many, many times people would, would think that, you know, I'm a girl. And it's kind of it's kind of funny because like I've been pretty active, you know, live and online, whether it was uh, yeah. like, tutorials or or by school and all of those things and it's just like yeah well i guess i guess you know some people just don't care about about that or don't pay attention but that's fine it doesn't really matter i just find i just find it really funny so you're originally from russia uh and you live in japan yeah uh so i you know i was i'm i'm curious what made you move there like is was there was it more work related or um because look, I love Japan, although I have never been there. I just <laughs> admire the culture. I really need to go and visit it one day. Yeah, it should come sometime. Yeah, man, like I really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I think Please everything, do. everything I grew up on when I was a kid uh, comes comes from from that country. So it's yeah, it just ha- just just has to happen. I think in next year or two, I'll definitely go. But oh, please do. Yeah, I need to. 
Um, so I, I was just curious what made you move there. Uh, you know, was it, was it work related or, you know, you wanted to change your lifestyle, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. First of all, it was like my big dream from, you know, from childhood. Like I really wanted to, uh, to visit Japan, you know, to, to know the language, to, you know, to watch anime without subtitles and stuff. But, uh, I, I never thought about it. Like it can be real. So I was like, yeah, it, it would be cool. But you know, I'm living in Russia. I have like this work here. It's not going to happen, but it's fun to dream about it. But at, at some moment I just, uh, uh, like got, uh, this friend, like a Russian girl living in Japan. And I was like, whoa, is it real? You're a Russian girl living in Japan. We started to talk and, you know, she explained to me how she get there. So, uh, and like, there's like a really easy way to live in Japan for like six months or one year, but you need to, you know, go to the language, Japanese language school there. So it's like student mm -hmm. visa. And I was like, whoa, I want to try that. Like, uh, I want to learn uh, language, live here for, you know, six months, maybe a year. So uh, I just decided to, you know, uh, f to get uh, like to, uh, how should I say it in English? Wait a minute. <laughs> just relocate and, and, and just try it with the visa and everything. Yeah, to just to try it for uh, like, I, I know that's how hard it's to stay in Japan mm -hmm. and work there and stuff. So I was like, uh, yeah, at least I learned some language there and have fun living here in Japan. So I just decided to uh, to move there for at least six months. And now I'm for four years now there. And <laughs> nice. So you, you yeah, it's a longer stay, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, you know. It's 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 so funny that uh, in in today's world, you know, there's you can basically go and live in different places, and you don't really have to even have per se a work permit to be there and 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 do stuff because like really just like you travel and 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 experience those places. I think it's I think it's pretty cool, you know, having that dream that dream of um, hey, I want I want to check out this culture. You know go there see how it is let me let me just try and move there on the student visa that's that's pretty yeah <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. god bless internet because <laughs> if not for internet it, it would never happen you know i would never meet this friend i would right. never get this like freelance jobs i can do anywhere on this planet just you know i need to mm -hmm. send the final pictures before the deadline so that's it i don't need to be like in some uh, exact geographical place to to do my work you know so i right. was like yeah i can i cannot just dream about it i can do it and i was like whoa this is <laughs> this so it like got my brain exploded so let's roll it back a little bit uh and let's talk about what got you into what are you doing now and obviously you're a pretty popular artist by now I believe on Instagram you have over like 1.4 million followers and on any other, you know, social media you have pretty substantial following as well. We became like really popular. I remember um, uh, seeing what you've been doing, I think it was like two years ago, maybe two and a half, where I started like really paying attention because I saw you were, you were, you were doing this, uh, this very interesting, you know, style of art. And, uh, and over time, it just became so unique uh, and super cool. But I, I was... Wow, thank you. <laughs> but my, my, my curiosity, and always when I, you know, I try when I when I speak with other artists, because I know like my history, what, what, what I was interested with and what got me into this industry, you know, what were my learnings and all that kind of stuff. But it's always very interesting for me to hear, you know, the journey that other artists go through, you know, and so let's let's maybe start with that like what got you into art and w were you a person that was always interested in doing that always drawing or this is something you know your parents uh helped you with uh I'm curious about that man yeah okay let's let's start like really f far far from now on like uh, at six years old i am started to read a lot of books i was um, i was really big fan of reading so my biggest dream like from that moment was like i 
yeah, I want to, I want to write books. I want to write stories. <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to create all this stuff. So I started mm -hmm. to, you know, to write my own like short stories a lot, like showing it to adults, showing it to friends and everybody like, yeah, okay, I should read it. But you know, I, I don't have time. I, I can actually like take my time, 15 minutes to read it. And I was like, oh, okay. And of course, like as a kid, I was also drawing a lot because, you know, that's what the kids do. <laughs> so right. after like failing to show my, you know, uh, my short stories to other people, I started mm -hmm. to show them my, you know, drawings, my pictures. And everybody was like, wow, cool, great. This is nice. You're, you're doing great. Uh, and I was like, okay, so like, you know, visuals, like the pictures are the like the fastest way to express your ideas and your <laughs> your what you want to show it's like it's it's much faster and like efficient than the you know the books the literature and i was like i think i should start drawing <laughs> <laughs> so th this little moment in my childhood that's that's where i decided like, i don't better done you know do the books i better do drawings so yeah from now uh, from that moment um i get to this uh, art school it was like i was living in some like really far far away uh city in russia so we don't have any you know good uh schools there but uh, i get lucky i get lucky at 11 years old to get to the moscow Mm -hmm. art lyceum so uh this it was like the normal school but we needed to spend like eight hours a day four hours for normal stuff you know like language uh, math and you know uh geography and stuff and four hours for drawings mm -hmm. so i uh, i got to the architecture faculty and uh, we were drawing a lot, but uh, the good thing about these drawings were that we have like exact goal for why we're doing that. So in architecture, yeah, you created this building and you want to show it to the client and you want to show it the, the most efficient way for him to understand like what's the materials, what's the size, you know, what's the big idea about your building. So we were doing drawings for uh, showing textures, light, for showing, you know, uh, perspective in, in the best uh, efficient way. So mm -hmm. we weren't doing drawings for, uh, you know, for, uh, so it wasn't like portraits. It wasn't like uh, anything related to the, you know, to the characters. We were doing this uh, naturmorts, like still lifes and mm -hmm. plaster heads. And uh, it was like really oriented about like how do you show the volume of the 3D object on a 2D space. So it was all about the texture, light, and you know composition and relance and stuff. A lot of so it, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the biggest problem was it was unbelievably boring. So <laughs> when I was a kid, I was like you know having fun drawing stuff because it's were like, like a lot of characters. I was drawing like you know game levels, like what about like new game levels for Mario and stuff. Yeah, it I was did the fun. Same. I would draw yeah. on paper like the <laughs> like the schematics of yeah know, yeah <laughs> like Contra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Here, here's the enemy there here's you need to yeah. jump you know There's here's you take a key from the from the yes roof. <laughs> spikes i know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah so when, when i get to this art lyceum i realized like the drawing is boring i i don't want to do that so mm -hmm. what we were doing is you know uh, we we see the object in front of us and we need to copy it on the paper for it to look like the most re realistic as possible so we were spending like you know 20 hours on one apple so with like with perfect you can see the texture you can see you know uh what's um, you know the lighting the tones you need to get this like really ideal perfect apple in front of you on your paper and it wasn't really boring and uh, like at this time i was like oh no i, I don't want to do that 
drawing is boring, architecture is not so fun. <laughs> and that was the time, that was a time when I started to read a lot of manga and Japanese animes and uh, playing a lot of games on my PlayStation Portable. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, this this people like like the manga arts in manga arts and anime they are doing drawing as well but it looks like they are having much more fun than me you know <laughs> because they're not you know just copying something in front of themselves so they are using their imaginations to create worlds you know to create stories to create interesting characters and i was like I need to try this too. So <laughs> when I was like 13 years old, I started to draw a lot of, you know, manga style stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have my own comics. I try to do a lot. And like, it was really, really hard at first because I would, I was so used to just draw stuff in front of me. And then I need to, you know, start it create characters I never seen before in my life. Uh, I, I I was like, had really big problems with anatomy. Uh, and I was like, whoa, this is so hard, but this is fun. So <laughs> yeah, that's where it was started. Yeah. What do you think was your favorite, you know, manga and anime back, way back when, when you were, you, you know, you discovered this medium and it's like, shit, like, oh my God, like I want to learn and do that. I want to want to create my own characters because, you know, what, what you've been telling me, you you always write, you always love to write stories and yeah. create worlds, almost like create worlds in your head. I don't I don't exactly know what kind of stories you were you were trying to write, but you know, writing a story means you create a character and you create something from your imagination. So yeah, that obviously didn't didn't translate well in the architecture class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was enough, no, nothing creative in there, so. Right. Yeah, it's more like foundation and almost yeah. like a mathematic approach to, yeah. you know, learning the specifics of how to and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then I guess, you know, when you, when you, when you want to draw characters, that's where, that's where it becomes, you know, it becomes fun because characters usually tell stories one way yeah. or another, right? Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I'm curious, like, what, what, what do you think was, were your favorite ones? Yeah, when I started doing that, uh, I was really fascinated by Blame. So, mm. the Blame is this story without, like, dialogue. Like, they have some dialogues, but, like, you know, 99% of the story, there's nothing. It's, like, really dark cyberpunk stuff, and uh, it has some, like, really unique approach to, the like, the backgrounds, because uh, all happened, like, under the ground. There's, this, like, really, yeah. really tall buildings, and, you know, this uh, these bridges, and the, like, main character is so emo. <laughs> and I was really like, whoa, this is awesome. And then I, real- and then I like, get to know that this mangaka, he hates Tomo, uh, he's like uh, actually architecture, you know, he, he was like uh, studying architecture and then he was like, you know, I want to do manga and he created this one shot blame and then created this series and like I, I loved it because it was so unique. Yeah, it was cool. so different. Yeah. Yeah, I love it too. It's just the way it's drawn and, you know, sort of the yeah. world he, he creates in it. It's just like it's it's very unique in a way as well you know there's a ton of yeah. uh, from 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 anime manga and, and generally japanese culture there's just so much amazing cyberpunk that comes out of it you know yeah I, I, I you know i would argue that that combined with uh, you know uh gibson and and yeah. and, and you know philip k dick and some of the western writers like those two worlds when they collide they create like the perfect cyberpunk you know yeah <laughs> like yeah take take uh, experiences from both and you know sort of like more techy um you know approach from from let's say william gibson when you when you read yeah. neuromancer and then you know you look at um nihei's work or uh work from otomo uh, or Mamoru Oshii's uh, uh, adaptation of, you know, Ghost in the Shell. That, those are my favorite, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Um, and it's like, yes, yes, it speaks my language. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so so that's cool so you, you you basically grew up on that was there anything else that you found that was pretty inspiring and almost like influencing you from that very yeah early on? like somehow related to the blame there was other manga called uh, yokohama kaidashi kiko it's like a uh, shopping trip diary to yokohama and it's a story about this robot girl who lives in the world like after uh like post apocalypse world there is nothing there like uh mm-hmm. a lot of uh you know like uh, waters came up so the gr- like mm, how should i put it so uh uh, like it's like on five thousand people, just five thousand people living in Japan, and mm-hmm. it's like uh, manga. There's nothing happens, so it's like everyday life of this robot girl. Like at the first, you don't even know she's a robot, and like it's it's like really sad story. Like because she's the robot, she can see all her your friends, you know, getting old and die, and their their children getting old and die and she's like still running her coffee shop there and sometimes like a couple of people like randomly get inside and drink some coffee and she talk about where are they from and stuff so uh it's like it's not your normal you know action or Mm -hmm. you know uh harem manga or something it's like really uh unique in its sadness (laughs) right Right, right, right. I I didn't know about that one. I'll check it out. Yeah, check it out. It's it, it doesn't look like something you know something different, but when when you read it, like for twenty pages, nothing's happened. She's just you know getting to buy the coffee beans and get back, <laughs> and there's watermelons she need to sell and stuff. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. different. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I remember. You know, for me, it was. Um, mostly otomo and and you know uh and then ghost in the shell obviously yeah like those yeah. two were sort of like <laughs> staples uh, staples on and they just influence you know so much of my childhood and then later on i discovered you know cowboy bebop and yeah and uh you know obviously when i was a kid i was watching dragon ball z because i think everyone watched dragon ball z <laughs> um and i remember Back in uh, when I was like really young, like when I was a teenager, like that's before I was a teenager, when I was like eight or nine or even younger than that, they used to play a lot of anime in, in Polish TV, but it was like different ones, you know, it was like Daimos, like this huge robot stuff. Um, gosh, there was the soccer one uh that everyone watched because because soccer is big captain Tsubasa. yeah 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 there you go that one yeah um and there was something else yeah there was just like a ton of they had like this block of two hours every day on the national tv nice. where they would play anime i was like yes <laughs> i was watching all, all, all the time like every single one even even those I didn't like, there was like weird ones that was just like, yeah, that's for girls or something, you know? <laughs> like what? Sailor Moon? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Sailor Moon was there for sure. And I was like, I don't want to watch it, but there was like nothing else on TV. Like, <laughs> I would still watch it anyways. Yeah. So that influenced me a lot. I remember like trying to, to uh, draw manga as well. Mangas and like, you know, manga characters. It was like, oh, I, I, I'm yeah. really not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, drop, but it's, I it's, know that's like you stick around to it. Was that was that how you developed your, you know, your style? And, and is, is that what you started, you know, when you started working in this industry? W- did that become your like forte that that part that made you work in this industry or you discovered other, you know, avenues uh, that made you work in this industry first and then, you know, sort of like hit, have that anime look that you were doing all, all, since since the childhood all, all the way up till now. Uh, yeah, like uh, this is like really great story. I uh, really like to uh, sh- share with everyone. Like uh, I was uh, six years old when I seen the Mamoru Oshii's Ghost in the Shell first mm-hmm. time. And I was scared. Uh, I didn't understand what's going on. There was a lot of, you know, naked body there. There was a lot of blood. There was a lot of explosions. I, I was scared, but at the same time, I was like, 
whoa <laughs> it looks stunning dude oh my yes. god it looks so good but yeah, it was it so different from you know like american uh cartoons i used to see like american tale or you know teenage mutant ninja turtles all of this i was like this is so looking so real that's why yeah. it's so you know scary for the six years old i didn't even understand the story but i was like whoa i want to i want to do something like this i want to create stuff like this mm -hmm. and you know like from from now from from this time it was always like my my biggest goal i want to you know create you know this animated stories or just you know stories in some way that can uh you know can influence you in this way i was like shocked like for this day at, at six years old i was like i was going to with my mother to shopping and i was like oh, in the scene in the beginning like of creating the cyborg or this scene at the end with the battle in the tank tank mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was always like you know uh repeated in my head and i was like what was that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um for some time I didn't know like where where do I want to uh, work because you know I really like games they have stories you know I really like animated movies mm -hmm. they really have stories you know movies at, at all they just have stories and I was like what's what what should I choose <laughs> but yeah this it wasn't that easy because I was uh, you know trained to do architecture for 10 years and I was like, I, I didn't even start dreaming about doing these movies. I was like, yeah, I was dreaming, but I was never thought like uh, I could totally, totally like, like you know, make let money me, from that. Yeah. Let me throw you a cur curveball here then. Uh, did you, was there a moment where you realized that you can actually make money doing this uh, as work? Or is it something you sort of like learn about somewhere along the way before you started to think about working anywhere? Yeah, my first work was in video game development as like lead character, uh, character, uh, lead concept artist. Because, uh, you know, like, how should I put it? Like, there's some like for example you're a kid and you're looking at a car at the street and you know there's not enough place in your head to realize that this car was created by people you know yeah the, yeah, yeah. the car is so big for you like it's it's just maybe just god you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> it just magically like, appeared from yeah nowhere. it magically appeared like buildings cars you know programs software animated movies games uh when you uh don't know how they're created like who created them you think they are just there so there's not not possible for you to like to be a part of creating something like this mm -hmm. so little by little uh when, when i was in russia i created my own little game and sent it to like russian gaming magazine Mm -hmm. Like it's called Gameland, and they are like published it like with screenshots and put it on the disc that was like you know there was a time where magazines were was like it's DVD disc, yeah, uh, and they put it the game there and they say like wow cool, uh, and I was like what, <laughs> I was like wow so it's possible to create a game and show it to other people it's so fun can I can I like work further with that so. So after that, I was doing this illustrations for this magazine. Like I was doing the comics, like every month, like a couple of pages of comics for this magazine. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, yeah, how about I try myself in working at a video game development company? And then I started working there and I was like, wow, this is fun. But there's like, there was this development company for doing like uh, online games. So there was no stories. I just needed right. to create a lot of concepts of, of a lot of stuff like characters, cars, interiors, uh, like, uh, you know, clauses and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. there was no story. So I was like, I got really bored. And then I found another place. And this place were doing this uh, motion comics stuff. So it's like, it's not animation, but it's still like... Uh, 
scenes changes, characters talks, and uh, there's some like you know some primitive animation there. And there I started like again as a concept artist because there was like a comic called The Knights of the Void. It's mm-hmm. like Cosmo Operas, SF, uh, science fiction with spaceships, uh, aliens. So I, I was doing a lot of concept stuff of this and then i get the job as like direct director of whole series so i was i was doing storyboarding i was doing all the you know nice uh, directing and like this little by little steps a uh, step after step i realized that it's possible to create this stuff you know thought like were created by uh like real persons so i was like mm. hmm maybe i could start working with some like big companies or working with some real animation after that and yeah so (laughs) how should i put it uh i never believed i can do what i really like to like i really like animes really like manga really like games but i never believed i can be a part of it Mm -hmm. and now when it became my reality i was like Wow, I so I needed to grow, you know, to to believe in these dreams can be real. So I don't right, know. right, right. Yeah, I remember. I, I asked you because I, you know, I remember when I was, you know, I I used to draw, and you know, I was this kid that would draw. Like I remember drawing uh, like Santa Claus for like the Christmas, uh, you know, artistic class we had in our in our primary school. We were asked like, "Hey, can you guys draw a Santa Claus?" And that you know, everyone would draw a Santa Claus, and I would draw a Santa Claus with like a chainsaw, you know, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. I always, I would always get in trouble because I always wanted to do something wicked and and funny and and you know something cool. And yeah. then obviously, like the influences of um, the mangas and animes, and I used to play like uh, role playing games like Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, yeah. and you know, Dungeons and Dragons, like, I just grew up on that stuff, you know, and that, yeah. that always influenced the way I work. But when, I remember looking at the, the art in those books, you know, when you when you buy Warhammer, our uh, RPG game, like the, the freaking 400 pages book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you go through like all the rules of the game and you see those amazing, amazing pictures. I always, I always thought like, wow, there's like few few nerds like me that put it together you know and and this, now we can play it you know i yeah. it just never crossed my mind that someone actually there is a company that actually exists hires people you know uh pay them to do the work and that's why you have it in your hands you know like, yes <laughs> crossed my mind and I remember looking at magic cards and they were always like fascinating to see magic cards and all those amazing illustrations and you know in the beginning, when I was a kid, I always thought, you know, oh, it's like kids like me that send the work in and then some of them are really good uh, and then get published or this just magically appears. I don't know how this happens, but just yes, happens, yes. you know. <laughs> and then for me, it was like when I saw when I saw um, I think it was uh, Cathedral from Tom Beginsky. It was nominated to Academy Award. I've been telling the story so many times already. It's not okay. even funny. But <laughs> on the national TV, they've they've shown like a behind the scenes. And I saw people sitting in the office and I already knew this is an office, you know, because it looked like yeah. an office with the tablet and drawing and making making stuff on screen. And yeah, and I knew oh oh, that's how it's done (laughs) (laughs) yeah so it was for me it was like this moment of switch it's like i never thought about that specifically and now i know that you you can actually make money doing that and and for me that was like uh that was the moment where i took it really serious but it seems that for you it was more gradual like you started discovering those little nooks and crannies and steps along the way (laughs) so that's kind of cool um Okay, so so what actually, um, by the time you were moving to uh, to Japan, I, I'm guessing you've already had some few years behind your belt, huh? Mm, yeah, as a working uh, experience, I was working for like maybe three years in mm-hmm. game development in this motion comic uh, company. 
but uh like the biggest uh i like the biggest good thing i done for my car- career oh how do you pronounce it Car- career yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was um, I started doing this everyday illustrations and sketches and posted those on the internet because mm-hmm. like um, at the same way I realized like working in this motion comic company I realized like I'm really lacking the color theory I really lacking the anatomy I'm really lacking the you know uh, the dynamics I really lacking you know the design. Uh, how do i design stuff right right so every every evening after work like for four hours i was doing two hours of like studying something for example i have this uh like loomis books mm-hmm. and there's a lot of like really yeah loomis is great i love yeah. anatomy stuff yeah really helpful stuff about like anatomy perspective and stuff uh, and after this two hours i was like doing something for myself there's a lot of you know like photo studies there was a lot of like just fan arts i was doing a lot of fan arts this time and i just posted it to the internet like every day so i decided like every day i shoot like post something uh so uh, i i will be motivated to you know to do it every day so like Mm-hmm. Uh, I decided it, so I, I should do it. So, and it's like I'm doing that for a few years, uh, for, yeah, for four years, I believe. Yeah, I'm now, looking at some of your posts from like four years ago. Man, like it changed so much. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's been, a, it's been a, quite a progression, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. Um. So every day, right? Almost every day, because yeah, I you know I follow you on Instagram. There's always a post every day. Yeah, like this year. Yeah, this year I skipped two times. Like last month I skipped three days, and this month I skipped two days. So it's it's like the first time it happened in four years. So how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I can't say that, like uh, as I, I'm doing it for four years now because yeah, I I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's like, you know, you, it reminds me a little bit of, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Beeple. Um, Mike, Mike Winkleman, he, he, he's been doing a, an artwork every day for past, I think, 10 or 11 years now. Nice. Yeah, he's he's crazy motherfucker, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, li- literally, literally every day something and... It's 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 kind of crazy, you know, seeing what he started doing way way back when, because he used to just do drawings and illustrations, and then um, changed that to uh, Cinema 4D and Octane, you know, started doing like those weird stuff. A lot of a lot of you know when you go out when you go out on the internet and you see a lot of like those abstract renders from from 3D engines, like yeah. I would say at least half of it is inspired by people's work you know easily half of it is, is wow. inspired by him so uh so that's kind of crazy so yeah that's 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 cool so you that became i'm guessing your sort of like the biggest part of your career huh yeah so for, first of all like it's really helped me to you know mm, to skill up you know mm-hmm. uh and uh, so I get to like draw better, and the second of all, it made me, you know, taking more, take it more seriously. So it wasn't like hobby for myself anymore. Um, I'm have this like you know everyday uh, deadlines for myself, so I'm taking that more, you know, more like my job. So right, right, it, right. it became like something I could not not do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you, and you yeah, feel guilty if you're not doing it on the yes, specific it's, day. Yes, it's it's easier to do it than not do it. So uh, like, how, how long do you think it took you from the moment you started and and did it just because you wanted to do to a point that if you knew like you're not gonna do, you're not gonna do a sketch that one day, you you'll feel super guilty. Yeah, I remember the first time when I like. Uh, in one month when I started doing it was day the first time I like there was a party and I got really drunk and then I realized oh my god I I need to like to do a sketch today I haven't done it and I was like 
what what should I do? What should I do? I'm like, I'm so drunk. There's no way I can draw something. And like, and there's, you know, this, this voice, voice of logic were happened. He, he's like, uh, you know, it's okay. It's your health. It's the most important. You, you, you better not post anything today. And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I need to try that. And I, I drove this in like Evangelion fan art, like really badly, like Shinji sitting on the, this uh the chair and on the next morning i was like wow this is really bad because it looks like he's sitting on the toilet because of the <laughs> because of the shadows on his pants it looks like he's like sitting on the toilet with his pants down <laughs> and i was so you know i was so embarrassed about it but uh after all i realized that this was like a really big moment like uh even if i'm not feeling well if i'm if i'm like you know not uh uh believe i can do something i need still i still need to try it and it, it like really helped me to you know uh to fight with urges with like oh i should better not go to to work today and stuff you know it's like it's uh, always like when i start this everyday illustration in the evening and like it's really hard to start it because i i really want don't want to do it you know but mm -hmm. when i just started when i am uh, open the file when i start doing the first uh, you know strokes it's like i'm just starting to get into it and now i i need to finish it so right uh, right <laughs> Do you think, uh, you know, out of, let's say, a whole week of you doing sketches, how many times you're like, fuck, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do this. Like, how many uh, times you, you feel like, what is the ratio of, like, I really want to, you know, sketch something today versus, like, uh, like how about watching some TV? <laughs> yeah, to say the truth, it's, like, every day. <laughs> There's nowadays like, wow, I really want to do some cool illustration and post it to the internet. There's no days like this because right. I'm, I'm, I'm always scared. The illustration is not going to be good enough. I'm all, always scared. Like, uh, it. I, I can't not I cannot even finish because like uh, there's the problem with my own illustration how I see it like I'm started starting to hating on it mm -hmm. before it finished so uh, I, I really like uh, need to finish it fast before I like oh god I hate this stuff and just you know uh, close the Photoshop and throw my computer out, out of the window so like there's like a really good point in that because because of this you know negative thinking about my own works about it, like this hating on uh, my my own illustrations mm -hmm. that's where uh my like speed skills are coming from like oh my god i hate it so much i need to finish it as much as faster as i can so um at first i was just you know learning this anatomy and composition and colors and then i uh i, I never liked my work uh so i was like ah, oh, for finish it i need to finish it fast so i'm mm. uh was like you know training myself to do same things faster because it's like it's really helping to actually post it right uh, right 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 but your goal was never just to post your goal was to learn and then even later down the road, it was like, yeah, I'm still learning. I'm doing it for myself mostly. Or were you, were, were, were there any point and at which you, you almost feel obligated that it has to be posted, not just posted for a sake of, you know, keeping the habit, but posted for a sake of, this is my audience now. And I really want, yeah, to it's, it's all, it's more of like the people are waiting for the new post today. And I, I don't want to bring them down, you know, I don't want them to like, oh, we were waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting, interesting. That's, that's really interesting, man. Cause like, I find that in myself a lot of times. And I think, I think it's a healthy thing to look at what you do and, you know, on one end, appreciating the, the amount of work you're putting into something and if it turns out to be something good then being, you know, at least happy about it for a bit, you know? Yeah. But I think every artist that I know, including myself and, and most of my friends, when they look at the work that they do, they always have something to pick on, you know? It's like, fuck, like, yes. this turned out 
this turn, it turned out okay or at the time when they finished working on it and i have that too you know like i'll be happy with the image i've created and then the next day i look at it as like fuck yeah i like, should have <laughs> done this too. instead <laughs> you know like yeah. i always find something that could have been done better um you know what's fascinating is i try to not to read comments because because yeah <laughs> at, there's certain there's certain threshold in which you, ha- you get so many comments on the work that you could easily spend hours on end to read them all you know yeah. um and i'm pretty sure you you have you have like the the worst end of it because <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just based on the volume of you know how many people react to your work you know there's just just not enough time in the world to to read it all um but i find it fascinating that i read comments and, and there's almost like a split for me where when someone criticizes my work you know i get i get mad because like who the fuck are you to like criticize <laughs> what i'm doing but then i also understand that that comes from you know, genuinely someone being interested in it. You know, I, I, I'm not even talking and I'm disregarding, you know, pretty, pretty obvious trolling comments or comments that come just obviously from, from not jealousy, but just like, just being mad about the world in general. You know, there's certain type of people that just, they just want to spill shit and they don't really care. Um, if, if, if it has any merit in it whatsoever, but I find it fascinating that sometimes the comments I get angry at, like in myself, I never express, I try not to express that anger on, on online at all. And then like it, I start to think about it and it's like, yeah, this person is right. And even just like looking at the work, uh, you know, and when I said like, I look at something and I get mad that I've done something that I could have done better, like those those moments of like regret, like I should have done it this way or that way, they come back uh, and and sort of like align when I see yeah. those comments as well. So that's kind of, I kind of find it fascinating. Uh, do you, I? I guess you're not reading any comments or like just no. I'm, I'm mighty, reading right? everyone. I'm reading everyone on the Instagram, but I'm not reading anything from the uh, like Big Save and Art Station and Demon Tart. Mm. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's easy to do in Instagram because uh, like uh, my Instagram settings is like I can see uh, like the comments on my posts and the likes from my friends or from the people I follow. So like if, if you like my work, I can see it. If uh, someone commented on my in, uh, post, I can see it. So I'm just uh, taking out my phone and scroll through the, you know, uh, these notifications and that's that's it. So um, that makes sense. It, yeah, so, it's easier then. <laughs> so Instagram would be your sort of main thing at this point, right? Yes, the mainly I'm concentrating on the Instagram. I'm trying to create works that would be interesting not only for the people who like drawing themselves, mm-hmm. but f- just for you know the people who are here on Instagram to you know to check out some foods on of their friends, to check out some selfies, to check out some cats, and okay, there's this illustrations here. So mm-hmm. uh, thanks to Instagram, it's easier for me to understand what the people who are not doing some you know visual development works themselves what's they what they want to see you know so right. this is like a really good platform for that because in devant art everybody's drawing themselves so you know if there's comments on devant art there's just just about like the skills just about like uh, oh i like this character and stuff but on the instagram the comments there is like oh i really like the feel of the hair you know i really like right. the like the the eyes of these characters it reminds me of you know this like uh popular person or my friend it reminds me of my girlfriend and stuff so there's like really personal thoughts of the real people mm-hmm. who they're not to you know to check out like uh 
other artists works to like learn themselves to draw they're just there to you know to get this experience so i'm right. trying to draw illustrations who can be a good experience for just people who are not interested in, in drawing illustration or you know stuff like this you know you know what i find really interesting about instagram specifically uh is people really engage with the content you know like yeah I, whenever i ask a question i i usually get the vast majority of of like replies answers and um just just generally communication and interest in the topic at hand i almost almost always I get the most engagement from from people on Instagram. I, I I'm guessing it's just because it's so much easier to, I guess, having on a, on your phone. Yeah. Um, just it's basically phones these days are extensions of ourselves at this point. <laughs> it's almost like a yes. like a like an outside cybernetic, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's not implanted, but it's almost it almost is. Do you get ever nervous? Like, you, where's my freaking phone? <laughs> I think everyone does at this point. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I find it really, really intriguing because I, I, you know, like whenever I ask question, that's where I get the most engagement. I think Twitter is kind of similar. There's, it's more of a conversation platform. Yeah. Uh, Facebook is weird. Facebook is super weird. <laughs> it's like I only have Facebook at this point to basically share my work and talk with the friends that I know really well. But yeah. it's just like the way it's the the algorithm works. I just it's just weird, you know. Like if you want to have a Facebook page, like artist page, like almost no one ever sees it until you pay money. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like you have to pay like advertise your work so that more people can see it can see it it's it i don't know why I, I guess it's just like a good money maker for them yeah i believe instagram right now is having s the same stuff so they're showing your posts just to you know to 30 percent of your followers and if you pay they can maybe they can show you to the hundred percent oh, of wow. your followers and i was like whoa i don't like this <laughs> i didn't know that that's crazy yeah yeah, yeah it's 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 interesting Hey, I, you know, maybe, hmm, because I see some prof, I, you know, I was always curious, like, why there are some specific profiles that create art and they have, like, almost 100% engagement, you know, like, very, well, like, way, way above 50%. You see, yeah. let's say a person that has 100,000 followers get 40, 50,000, you know, likes yeah. or whatever you know i i honestly don't really care about likes specifically because i think they're meaningless but just like the amount of comments and engagement and and then when you when you want to sell let's say your prints or um t-shirts yeah. and stuff like that that's where you know that's where it comes to you know that's where the, the likes and the ratio matters that's the only the only part but yeah this could explain it man like Maybe just paying paying up a little, little buck here and there, get that get that get that shit rolling, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know for sure. Like the the less you post, the more people would see your post when you post it. So, for example, my uh, Instagram logic is I post every day, right? Mm -hmm. This is the worst because Instagram would see like, oh, this this guy posting every day, so it's it's okay to not show his post to a lot of people but we should better show the posts of the people who post less because for example it's your friend who just got engaged and posted photo on instagram you better see this but like it's more really unique how it works yes this is how it works and this is like it's making me you know thinking about like should i really like do my do my best to post every day because it's 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 like the uh worst i can do for my account that is interesting dude that is interesting yeah. i think uh, i think it would be good disclaimer by the way to just say how important social media is right now for for the artists and you know some might argue that you really don't need social media to you know be an artist and work in the industry and that's true I think I think that's true. You can still, you know, do really, really well. I have a lot of friends that have almost no uh, presence on social media. Yeah. Uh, and, and they are doing really well in the industry. 
But you know, there's one one thing I started to observe, and and you're a good example of that. I obviously want to pick your brain on this a little bit. Uh, is how these days you can actually make a living and and become you know just 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 be an artist for sake of being an artist and expressing everything that is best about yourself and still make the make the living out of that instead of you know always be working for someone or creating projects and yeah you know, there's a certain group of artists that create create content and hire people as well that's all that's that's also a good way of doing that but there's always like this almost like a corporate approach where yeah. i'm doing work for client and as soon as it's done and maybe when it's released and then maybe if i get permission uh if i negotiate it then in my contract i'll i'll have that posted you know yeah. um and i find like personally and i'll be questioned to you i guess that's why you're doing this um you know, you definitely find it more engaging and fun to do your personal work than professional work, right? Uh, it's exactly <laughs> not the case. Oh. Like, <laughs> so let, let's start a little bit about like uh, like the art independence. So if we're talking about art independence, it's mostly Patreon.com. Like, right. This is the place where people are just uh, subscribing for for my uh, every week's uh, you know posts with the rewards to see all those insights of my works. So there's this PSD files, this video processes of how I paint that. There's the brushes. There's you know high res. They can use it for mm -hmm. wallpapers. So uh, th this is like the biggest part of my income, actually. So, uh, like, Everyone. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Patreon.com, Kupshin Affiliates, is subscribe now. And yeah, the the problem is like, uh, thanks for the Patreon.com and my like awesome patrons there. Uh, I can be like uh, independent. So if I, even if I'm not doing any, you know, freelance work or not working for companies, I have enough to, you know, mm -hmm. to pay my rent, to buy food and stuff. And I'm really, really grateful for that. But this is, there's, uh, uh, here's the painful uh, detail of that. Um, when I'm doing the work with a team of other people, when I'm doing the work, like so for some big project, you know, uh, if it's not myself here, mm -hmm. I'm really loving it. You know, I'm really, I'm really proud of what I'm creating. I'm really wanted to, uh, to, to share it with everyone. I really want to point out like this guy was doing this and he's awesome. And this part of this job was done on this guy. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. And so the less uh, in the, so if in the, in this project, the less uh, my part is there, the most uh, I'm willing to work for it. The most fun I have is that. And like the personal illustrations, this is like hundred percent me. So there's nobody doing anything. I'm just you know open Photoshop myself, doing the illustration, post it, and that's why I don't like it. Uh, so um, so you prefer more of like the teamwork and and being engaged with other people and creating something more on a collaborative uh result right yes and it's it's always painful to to me to you know to draw these illustrations to post it because uh, i never like them this much to <laughs> show to anyone so when i'm doing this teamwork i'm just i feel at ease because if I'm fuck up something you know there's people who could save this stuff uh we're getting to the root of it <laughs> yeah so if, if you don't like yourself if you don't like your works you're trying to you know to do something that have less of mm -hmm. it inside of it and my you know patreon work my illustrations are just 100 percent myself and that that's why it's so painful for me to do that so but i i don't have a choice you know <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll, you know, maybe, maybe this will uh, convince you. Otherwise, you know, there's 1.4 million of 
million of people that think otherwise. <laughs> yes, that, 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 that that's, that's the same. Huh? I, I can trust them in that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't like my works, so it's okay for me to not trust myself mm -hmm. for like, like, oh, this is shit. I would better not post it. But I trust my followers and that when I post it and they um, like writing these beautiful comments about how this made the their day and stuff you know how how they yeah. like how it looks like and they made him happy and i was like i i should better not trust myself of my own works that that's how it is but it's <laughs> is it's so never crazy. yeah it's never helping me feel ease about my own works like it's not about like it's always not enough like i think i can do better mm -hmm. i need to fix that i need to fix this i i don't really like the idea should i redo it it's like um more more of a feeling of i i'm not good enough to share something from inside of myself to all the world right but i'm i'm trying to not think about it you know i'm trying to feel my followers i'm trying to do it for them and it's like it's like I'm always I'm lying to myself, you know. It's don't like, you, don't you think that this might, you know, the way of thinking that way, and you know, don't I? I, I think this is pretty important uh, thing to say. I, I there's a lot of artists that think that way, and yeah, and, yeah, and and shamefully, a lot of those artists just decide not to post, you know, not to share. Yes, work. yes, and, and that's yeah, driving this, this crazy. is the stuff. Yeah, and that's uh, actually my thoughts, like. For example, there is like this artist. I want to see more of his works. I more. I want to post. I want him to post more, and he's not doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm feeling so sad. Like, wow, your works are so motivating for me. Please, <laughs> please post more. Of course, I I would not ask him. Like, not not in the world. Like, this is his own. You know, this is his own like life and stuff. And I was like maybe some people are thinking the same about me like maybe they want to see more mm -hmm. and it's like it's being more it's about being more respectful to your audience more than to yourself and i can do it <laughs> yeah uh and that, that's that's what's saving me from not posting anything because it's not good enough because i hate it because i'm not doing it for myself i'm doing it for all the people who are waiting for you know new illustrations <laughs> Every yeah, day. that makes sense and you know what like yeah it's it's crazy dude it's just like i think i think um the biggest part of it is whether it's it's intentional or intentional or not um a lot of artists have this uh, fear of failure that you know yeah. I, you know i'll be judged for the shitty work that i've done or i've done not enough or uh, I, I'm not really that good and therefore, you know, what's the point of, uh, of, of sharing the work? Um, and I, it, I wonder if it's related to, and I, I'm pretty sure a lot of it can be related to social media in general. Just like when you, when you follow someone's profile, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, you know, yeah. you name it. Um, people try and tend to only present themselves from from the best possible light you know and only, yeah. only show the good things about their life and then once you talk with with them privately you you start to learn like oh they're actually going through the same struggles and problems of the life exactly as i do you know and yeah. when we get this very distorted view of the world based on vacation pictures and <laughs> amazing yes. polished art that someone spent hours on end finishing and then claiming, you know, like I only done it like in one day, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that. And I think, I think it's not really healthy. You know, I've been, I've been, I've been that way personally, uh, in back in the days, you know, a couple of years ago when, when I was very uh, insecure about my work, uh, when I started yeah. and I, you know, I, 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 I loved posting and sharing work just for sake of learning. Cause I, I felt like back in the days, the, the climate was a little, a little different. I, you know, when I started it was 2004, 2003. Um, I think I started posting in 2002, actually, like yeah. late 2002. Um, that was when on season we had like season forums, you had mostly forums. You didn't have any social media back then. And yeah. the, the difference was that not that many people were seeing the work, 
but those who were you know hardcore enough to actually subscribe to the forum and you know and 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 register and and, and post they were really interested in art and, and you could go into like really interesting conversations about composition there was just just more merit to the conversation there was just more juice in the conversation if, if you will like these days yeah. it's just like click like cool looks awesome bye <laughs> you know there's yeah. just like not much of it and i think it's also it's, it's also disconcerting like when you when you post something and you know for whatever reason this one image everyone likes and then for whatever reason this other image no one likes and, and you get really insecure like fuck yeah me, i fucked up something <laughs> there's yeah. just so many layers to it you know like the mood and you know the time you posted it on and you know whether it's clicking with the cl with the current climate of what people are interested with you know i think yeah. it's just like it's a gamble that you cannot win or you can you can game it in order to get more likes and get more appreciation but i don't <laughs> think that's really important you know and as long as you uh and i find it in myself personally and i learn it more and more and the, the more I sit in this industry and more the more I work with different clients and friends and doing my personal work, the more I, the more I realize that it's really about me at, at, at the end of the day, you know, what makes me want to do something, you know? Yeah. If the drive for doing that is making me happy and I feel like there is, you know, it's, it's making me feel that this is the right way of doing things, then I'll do it, you know, and yeah. I, you know, it's it's it's, and I really find it crazy. <laughs> and she like, I hate posting, and like, and then you're like, <laughs> like you're complete opposite of like in your head versus like what, what do you do? And that just kind of shows like how much uh, perseverance, perseverance, and uh, and um, and like this uh, rel relent relentlessness you have in yourself to to actually keep doing that because. I'm telling you, like, there's just so many people I know that are good artists that they just don't want to post because they yeah. feel like if, if they feel like nah, it's not good enough. You know, it's like what if what the fuck you're saying, dude? It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah. share it. You know, who cares? It's great. Just just share it because you know. I so here's a question. Um, you know, you have really huge following. Like, I I don't think I know any other artists that have more people following the work than yours i'll be honest with you maybe geiger you know <laughs> but that's a different <laughs> different realm you found you found this niche uh, whether it's niche or not it's, it's not really a niche like if uh with that amount of following it's, you, you you're on the stride of of creating art that is really inspiring to a lot of people right and yeah. i'll be honest with you like when i look at what you're doing i'll tell you what inspires me one for one the, the just the amount of content you're producing and the fact you can do it all the time, you know, um, that's 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 number eight. There's also like you you already developed a style that is very unique, and I love it. You know, I really Thank like you. your work because uh, you Thank know. Thank you so much. And dude, there's I I don't really care how you how you come up with your ideas, how you put the put them together. You know, whether you use photo that, that the, to me, those are nuances, and they I don't really care about that at all. You know. Cause I use photos. I use all the tricks in the world to get where, where I am. You know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm <laughs> cheating my way in, <laughs> but that doesn't really, doesn't really matter. You know, cause it's tools. I, I had this conversation with Ash actually. And he said like, you know, the people that say, oh, you used photos, therefore you're cheating are hypocrites because then why you're typing on the iPhone? Like you should send me a pigeon with the letter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in, this is just the case. tools. It's exactly just the tools. Right. So yeah um I, I i'm curious like do you how often you actually get messages from people that really appreciate and and uh and and feel like they're inspired by what you do and do you do you have any um stories where you know whatever you've done made people inspired enough to actually pursue the the art career and and, and get and get actually successful with it I, i'm just curious because it, it's it you know, it's really hard to tell if someone someone has an influence like that, and it and mostly it happens through like podcasts and whatnot. But you know, it's, it's just my curiosity at this point. 
Yeah, there's one story I never told anyone, uh, and this this is a story that make me go in like you know when this all these times when I feel like I'm done something like not really good enough to post. I'm just thinking about this mm-hmm. story, and 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 it made me you know yeah, I maybe post it, made me believe in myself. So when I started the Patreon, Patreon dot com, my page, like in a couple of months there was this Patreon girl from from Spain, if I remember it right. And she wrote me this, uh, wrote me this, you know, uh, lengthy letter, like mm-hmm. message, private message, uh, explaining how like she had a cancer uh, and she like lost all the, you know, all the uh, positive emotions in herself. She realized, now I'm gonna die. I, I don't want anything. And then she just find out about my like illustrations. She was looking at all this stuff I'm posted, and she felt like, wow, this is really interesting. So she's like, uh, she subscribed to my p- Patreon page. She was like, we're, we're watching uh, all this, you know, videos, all these files, checking out uh, like the brushes. And she started to draw in herself. And she said that this was the point when she realized that she wanted to leave, you know, she wanted to to become like more uh, sufficient with the drawing. She really liked to draw. She really liked like my style. She wanted to draw something like this. And she said like, thank you so much for doing what you're doing because it helped me, helped me to, you know, uh, to feel uh, like that my life can can be good again. I don't want to die anymore. I, I don't want to fight with my cancer and stuff. And I, I was like so shocked, like about, I'm, I was just drawing stuff. I was just posting there. I wasn't trying to save anybody. You know, I want to try to like to be a really good guy or something. And it, it happened like, automatically it's like i was so shocked I, I i can say like um after that i decided no no i will not gonna stop doing that because uh, she's like she, this girl decided to to tell me about it and there's a lot of people who are just you know who just don't say anything there's there's a lot of comments in instagram with the stories like this but you know it's not so dramatically interesting it's it's more about like thank you so much for posting this stuff it inspired me to create my own works like thanks to you i'm decided that i don't want to give up on the drawing because like uh all the stuff uh, that that's what really helped me you know forget about how I hate my works and thinking about like what can it, what can it do to other people because you know like as you know the Spider-Man quote is like a really good one uh, there's is responsibility of the person who have you know this following on the social networks all these people are mm. watching your works they are you becoming a part of their life so I'm like I'm trying to be really precise of what I post there so there is no stuff that people could you know could uh feel bad about their selves uh they can like start to think about like their life is not good enough or stuff so um, yeah I, I read a lot of you know psychology books i read a lot of uh promotion oriented books uh re- wrote about like social networks and stuff and i'm trying to be like really thoughtful about what, what i'm doing in, in the social networks because yeah. of that Dude, that's powerful, man. Yeah. It's, you know, when you get messages like that and and really know like, damn, like I'm doing something that I'm just doing for fun or not for fun because I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it and wasn't yet, fun, but it was worth it. You know, all, exactly. all this suffering I get from all this <laughs> everyday illustrations, it, it's worth it for, for moments like this. Mm. That makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah, it, it definitely, the moments like that where you, you, you get a message from a person that, you know, shares the love and inspiration is like, yeah. okay, yeah, it's totally worth to actually keep, you know, keep going just because, just because like on and off chance, whatever I do will nudge a person or two in the right direction and change their lives, you know? And yeah. I think it's like, you know, I, I, I believe there are, there are certain things that dramatically change people's lives, 
um you know the influences that they get from the people that they follow uh you know whether it's your favorite artist or you know an influential speaker speaker or someone who you know writes books whatever that would be whatever kind of craft that is making people inspired um but i also you know and and that there's there has to be a certain personality trait in the person to actually do a dramatic change in their life you know just because of yeah one thing the, the power power is inside of them so you, yeah. you just need to find it that you need to get motivated to but get it out I, you know what i find m that happens way more often is people get influenced by the messages that they cling to and if you can become this uh this positive thing in the world you know like this whether it's just by outcome of creating your artwork and sharing it you know just just sharing your work um people find inspiration like that i mean i mean look you you've um you started by reading blame right and that yeah. inspired you enough to to actually find the purpose of what you're gonna do in your life and i it just happens so often you know yeah and, and over time and you know i get i get mostly through the podcast and sometimes um well, mostly through my school and then oftentimes through the podcast as well. And I'll tell you a funny story right after this. You know, I get those messages that, hey, like I, you know, I took this class from X, Y, and Z through your, through the school. It's like, it changed. Like I'm now working for, for Sony or ILM or something, you know, it's just like, fuck yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> we had this one student that just got into a costume union just because he took one of our classes. It's just like when you get messages like that, and by the way, we are the, the probably the most horrible marketers <laughs> when it comes to like <laughs> schools, because we like don't share those those uh, those moments and we totally should. Um, yeah. But even through the podcast, I'll tell you a funny story. So I just started working with, uh, with Tom Bilyeu and he is, you know, he, he's like this uh, guy who, uh, who created uh, Quest Nutrition and, you know, he became really wealthy because of that. And now he's like focusing all of his energy to uh, to create motivational content. And if you if you look at, you know, what he does, um, you know, if you go online, you, 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 you will definitely find you will definitely find and there's the one viral video that went super viral. And for anyone who's listening, um, he was talking with Simon Sinek. And, the, and Simon was talking about millennials and it's just like the millennial problem, right? When you, when you Google <laughs> that, you'll find it right away. Um, so, I'm, you know, and I started working with that guy, but the, the way I got in contact with that person was a person that was this, this young guy from, uh, from LA that, uh, listened to my podcast, right? And I yeah. I can't remember what what kind of work he was doing before that, but he said it was like one of those janitor, you know, store clerk, really underpaid jobs, right? Yeah. And he fucking hated himself. Didn't have enough time. Not, may, not maybe hated himself, but he always wanted to do art, but never knew how and and what to do, right? And then he listened to one episode where I said, you know, I used to be a janitor. I used to fucking <laughs> clean toilets. I would go home clean you know go from home from school to clean toilets and then like 1 a.m i would be home and i would still find time to to paint you know yeah and he took that one that one uh thing to heart and added that one hour of time or, or a little bit more time to painting and now he works for that guy you know and he got me in <laughs> contact with that guy it's like wow like it's just such a great return and also such a great story knowing that something you do can influence and change people's lives so you know it, it, it sounds like bragging but it really it really makes you <laughs> feel like man like what i'm doing and i'm you know you're doing it because you love doing that um and obviously the patreon is for you it's a it's a great extension but also just like supports you doing that all the time you know yeah and it's it's a great thing i think patreon by itself is such a great platform for yeah. people to support their, their you know what what what, other, what others do and it's just like it it couldn't be more genuine you know if you if you're doing something wrong no one no one will will support you right if you're doing something right <laughs> you will get the support it obviously comes with consistency and 
and just just being there and and, <laughs> and like the pressure oh, yeah the pressure that you're after as well but um yeah it's just like it just makes it all worth you know just one story like that can make like a whole month of, of work worth you know it's like fuck yeah this is just like staying in your head yeah yeah that's so crazy, yeah the, this girl message done a lot for me like as, as my work's done a lot for her her message uh done a lot for me and i was like yes i i need to you know even if like it's really painful even i if i don't want to do it i need to you know i, I don't need to stop I, I need to do it mm. yeah every day yeah and just do it do it for yourself too <laughs> Just trust, trust in 1.4 mil. They'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, dude. So, okay. So we've been almost uh, one and a half hours uh, on this thing talking. And uh, yeah, I was just curious if there's, you know, we could, we could wrap it up here. And I was thinking if there's anything else you would want to add or, or talk about. And if not, we can always uh, leave it for a discussion and do a follow-up because i really would love to have you back uh and you know <laughs> yeah me too deeper i know there's something cooking in the background that you know obviously you would want to talk about later in the future so that'll be a good occasion to come back what do you think yeah i can't wait to talk about all the stuff that's happening right now but i can't talk about it for yeah, now because we will, we will not <laughs> yeah all right let's wrap so, it up here then uh this this was this was a good one man i really I, you really surprised me in a couple of uh, places but in a positive <laughs> way yeah, uh, thank that's you so pretty much cool uh so yeah i, I cannot wait for that thing to happen <laughs> that thing to, <laughs> yeah to be to be to be done with or happen with so we can come back and, and, you know, have this really juicy conversation, follow up conversation. I, th I think it's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, dude, it's, you know, first, you know, we, we spoke on Skype before. Uh, so we kind of met before uh, briefly, but it was like a really good insight on, on, on yourself. And you're <laughs> this very, you know, unique personality out there. There's not much about you at all. So I, I feel really, really, really happy to have this first opportunity to break the ice <laughs> yeah i hope it wasn't so dark because you know no. like as we as we were talking about like social networks everybody will try to show like they're the happiest person ever with perfect lives like um i'm, I'm not talking on online about like my struggle with anxiety with depression because uh i want my work to you know to motivate people to like to do stuff to like i, I want to it's not like I'm trying to hide my dark sides with trying to be all happy on and like everybody, all these people saying like you, you make like drawing looking so easy, but it's not easy, you know, it's struggle no, all it's, the time. But I not. just want to be this uh, like the, like my accounts to be this existence of people to get motivated to do stuff, mm. you know, to, you know, to feel more happy about their own lives and stuff. So that's, that's, that's a why healthy approach. I think that's really yes. healthy approach. And I do it. I do it the same way. I really hate going into conversations about politics. I actually have a rule where I see someone talking about politics. I just instantly unfollow like, uh, no, <laughs> I don't need that in my life. Yes. Um, but you know, like it's, I think I think what you're doing is is really good and it's really healthy. You know, there's a, there's always everyone is different. Everyone has different approach in terms of um, how we look at our work. And some some people are, like yourself are more critical. Uh, others just don't care and just go with the flow. But that's just the the personality. I think that what matters is the end result. Um, and the end result is being awesome so far. So and again. I'm not gonna lie, 1.4 million people will agree with me on this. So, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. All right, let's wrap it up here. That was fun, man. Like, um, really, really, really. Thanks for for sparing a little bit of time and a little bit of insight in in you know, uh, your yourself. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Like, you're a really awesome person, and I can't wait to <laughs> talk again. <laughs> awesome, dude. All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, thanks. Thanks guys for listening. If you if you're listening it uh, obviously all the way to the end. Thanks for that. And follow yeah. Ilya on on his social <laughs> social network. 
and uh, give him a thumbs up there. Uh, if you really like his work and want to support everything he does, send him so, some love and, you know, go over to Patreon, support him there. <laughs> uh, all of the, all of that, you know, all of the links going to be in the show notes. So we'll go from there. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. And till the next one. Peace. Yeah. Thank you so much.